there. We're trying to connect that off here. Uh, well, welcome everyone to our event. Here uh, we have Saraz and his family. I figured I'll start with a brief introduction to him and then I'll let him introduce um, his family members. Taras uh, is a friend. We met uh, Notre Dame while we were doing master's degree there. I've always known him as a well-accomplished person. He had experience working in foreign affairs, uh, be that with democracy building in Ukraine, as well as other issues. Uh, related to refugees and um, rehabilitation and um, supporting infrastructures. And I know that at the moment he is helping uh, Ukrainians who are looking for a safe refuge to find that elsewhere, be that within the country or neighboring people. And that said, we are thrilled that you're here with us. Um, uh, and yeah. But, why don't you go ahead and introduce your family members and we'll just get started there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of participants, and I greet everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Taras. Uh, my family, my wife Uliana, uh, my son Danilo, twelve Hello. years old, and Marichka, uh, eight Hello. years old. And um, yeah, thank you very much for this uh, initiative, uh, Zamira, to uh, share our experience and to share our insights about the current uh, war and our. Um, uh, and our uh, experience in Ukraine. So maybe I will. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, maybe, yeah, I will start with uh, our uh, personal experience, personal insights, uh, and then we, we can uh, switch to the questions or maybe some insights that you have. So um, uh, we. Um, we lived, I personally lived in Kyiv for many, many years, for 20 years, and it was. Um, uh, for me, quite an uh, uh, emotional moment to leave Kiev uh, because uh, we actually have been awakened uh, by, the, by the explosions on 24th of February. Uh, nobody actually expected that it's, uh, it's going to happen. Nobody, you know, we, everybody knew that uh, the troops uh, amassed uh, around, uh, around Ukraine and the borders, but actually you know, nobody believed to the very end that he, he's, he's going to cross the line, but it happened. It happened unexpectedly to us. And on 24th, we have been awakened by, by the explosion. Late, later, we find out it was explosion in the Borispil airport, the biggest airport uh, of Kyiv. And um, later, we checked the internet and uh, with the red uh, headlines, it was written that actually uh, the war has started. And um, so we uh, we had to uh, we had to leave because I uh, I took my family my uh, uh, mother-in-law my kids my wife and um, uh, we uh, left Kiev uh, early in the morning like maybe six thirty in the morning. So uh, of course uh, you know this experience. Uh, as I said, uh, we had I had I had my uh, yeah, my car. Uh, close to the apartment and uh, actually I never thought about this but we uh, you know we started to, to to think about things we never think uh, and planned before I had my paper maps uh, in the in the car because just in case you know the road will be blocked or uh, the internal my, my mobile internal will be severed so uh, we we think ahead maybe we can, we have uh, to find some local roads uh, some uh, and uh, also i had um, uh, jerry cans uh, of gas in my car uh, we had them already in place for weeks because you know the government and the some um, uh, uh, you know experts said we have to be prepared for the worst and we have to consider the situation and um, we click. We quickly uh, moved out of the uh, out of the city, and we our plan was to uh, to go to Lviv, where uh, it's uh, we were born in Lviv, and there were some relatives living here, and that's why we decided to move to to the west part of the of the of the country, and. Um, uh, of course, on our way, uh, we heard uh, echoes of explosions all the time, you know, when we moved out of the city and uh, later we found out it was actually the road was uh, passing the Hostomel, um, uh, vicinity of the Hostomel airport and the Rivne airport. 
And uh, even if I didn't see those, uh, those uh, you know, explosions at distance, but uh, it was first experience, I felt those on my steering wheel. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't feel it in my life before, but it was, uh, it was strange experience. And our father, my father-in-law, uh, and also other three elder relatives uh, stayed in Kiev. Uh, they refused actually to evacuate. And um, uh, next uh, next morning, my father-in-law called me and said that uh, there was a bright flash uh, behind the window, and uh, it, we we found out it was Russian missiles shot down about uh, our district. It's a very densely populated district of Kiev on the left bank of uh, of uh, Dnipro River. It's called Pozniki. And uh, uh, still, uh, this uh, missiles parts are still on the yard nearby our uh, apartment building. And uh, since then, time many residential buildings, civilian objects, you know, and offices have been destroyed. And uh, actually, yesterday, uh, this night, uh, uh, another another building and clo a school close to this building have been destroyed as well. Damaged uh, the school, damaged and the and the and the apartment destroyed. So it took me 32 hours to drive to Lviv, uh, which consider a safer place. Uh, normally, it takes like six hours, but it's, it took 32 hours with a lot of cha challenges along the way. Uh, so here in here in Lviv. Uh, it's supposed to be safer, uh, but actually four days ago, it was a huge uh, attack on the um, uh, on the military range, which is located very close to here. It's called like International Center for Peacekeeping and Security, uh, but it's more widely known as a military range close to the Polish border. It's like just 20 miles, 20 kilometers, actually, it's 15 miles uh, close to the Polish border, which is NATO border. Uh, so it's reported that the missiles have been launched from the Black Sea. It's not far again from, from us, maybe like 20 miles. Uh, so it's more or less calmer here. But again, uh, we hear the air sirens every, every, week, every day, every mostly during the night. Uh, so we have um, uh, sometimes it's 20 minutes long. Sometimes it's like six hours long. So it's, if it's 20 minutes, our kids uh, and we go to shelter uh, downstairs just uh, and come back. But it's, if it's for six hours, we have to plan. We have to, uh, you know, the, to stay there for, for the whole night. So there are a few cases where my kids and wife uh, stayed uh, there during the night and uh, actually slept uh, there. And um, uh, so uh, the kindergartens and schools, uh, it's, they don't work. So uh, uh, children started to uh, study remotely. In several regions. Of in several not regions, everywhere. not everywhere, of course. Yeah, in Lviv, of, uh, I've been involved here in the night pet petrol vigils in the districts because many people are, you know, there was uh, everybody is kind of uh, uh, concerned about the different kinds of sabotage or different kind of the groups that can be damaged, you know, internal internal uh, groups. Uh, so uh, I've been involved in that. Also, we uh, help uh, refugees who come in from uh, uh, from uh, north and south, specifically from Kharkiv. Kharkiv is uh, in Kharkiv, very bad situation. The city of the uh, eastern part of Ukraine and uh, a lot of refugees come in by train, train considered more safe uh, way, mode of transportation now. Uh, so we help them. We try to find some, uh, you know, housing for them or if they, want, if they want to move further to Poland, we also find options to them to move there because there were huge lines at the beginning. There was huge lines at the border crossing points, like uh, maybe like 30, 30 miles of line of private cars and uh, also line of buses. So we help them. And uh, many people actually flee from the south uh, because of bombings, of course, but, but also they flee because of environmental threat. Uh, as you know, uh, Russian troops, they captured uh, Chernobyl uh, station. Chernobyl station is on the north. And that area, that vicinity is actually not very populated. So more, more or less, less people from that side. But uh, um, on the south of Ukraine, there is a Zaporizhia nuclear plant, which is captured by Russians. They started to, you know, some to threaten uh, to blow up some ammunition close to the reactor. So people are 
uh, from the central Ukraine people, although not bombed yet, but they are afraid of the environmental disaster. They still remember at the times of the Chernobyl disaster, and they uh, try to save their children and to save from the from this, from the you know, and all the aftermath of, of that. So one of the uh, specific actually thing that I noticed when I went to the pharmacies here, immediately next day, all the iodine, iodine kind of medicine disappeared because people remember the experience of Chernobyl and the iodine is the first kind of medicine that you have to take those pills the, to protect your body from the radiation. Uh, of course, uh, people are here very um, thankful to, to our allies, I would say, yeah, the, first of all, US and the UK, but also uh, our neighboring countries like Poland. Uh, you know, there is a there is a saying that the friend in, friend in need is a friend indeed. That's what we start feeling now. Russians always claimed us as a brother nation, but actually who turned out to be brother nation is Polish people and the Romanian people and the close, close uh, nation. The Czech, Hungarian, Slovak, uh, yeah, they are very, uh, they actually very compassionate about about the situation. They uh, organize themselves very good in terms of volunteering about food, about shelter, about housing, accommodation. You know, you you don't need any international passport to come there. You just go with the some idea what you have, like driving license or just whatever. Have a picture of you and your your surname. They will accept and they will help you. Uh, those people who who uh, seek for seek shelter. So um, uh, at the moment now uh, uh, we live uh, we live uh, uh, in um, listen to the air sirens and try and we have some special applications on the phone that uh, uh, help us to track when the siren starts and the sirens uh, ends. It's important, and because uh, these cruise missiles, you know, they also on the east of Ukraine, there is also started this uh, shelling. Shelling, of course, is a is a is a is a horrible situation. But here on the west, is more uh, we afraid of the uh, of the uh, bombings for, uh, by by the cruise missiles, and uh, we make some. Yeah, we we have to to learn the difference between different kind of things like that, and. Um, uh, uh, so in Kiev, actually, yesterday my father-in-law called me. There was a curfew for the for the two days in a row, so people will were not allowed to leave their shelters or their apartments if they prefer to stay in the apartment. The people, of course, stored some food um, and um, they get water, of course. And there are a lot of volunteer volunteers that help people, lo lonely people in Kiev who cannot afford to go uh, to, to the stores. Stores, pharmacies are um, operating in, in Kyiv, they, um, they open. And uh, so uh, life is continuing there, but of course it's like the wartime life, you know, the all the country starting to live uh, uh, in um, in the as a, as a, yeah not not peacefully but is uh, but according to the law to the to the to the war uh, kind of uh, rules to the rules of the curfew. Uh, so uh, this is the situation now uh, here. Uh, so generally, I would say that Ukraine is um, uh, fighting on uh, three kind of the fronts: it's military, economic, and information. Military, uh, I mean, yeah, the armed forces of Ukraine and the also uh, territorial defense unit. Uh, it's a unit that established just before the war. Is that everybody who is who has some experience in military uh, can join this unit? Uh, and um, uh, of course, Ukrainians uh, uh, fight fiercely, and they fight. Uh, so fiercely, fiercely because uh, this would mean for them uh, the end of their nationhood if 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 we uh, do not succeed. Uh, economical front, I would say that thanks to sanctions, sanctions of the U.S., sanctions to of the uh, but imposed by the uh, Western democracies on Russia, uh, Ukraine is also winning. I would say it has already won this economic war because Russia is suffering much on the sanctions. And uh, with regard to information is, of course, uh, it's important for us to deliver this uh, right information to, uh, to the whole world and especially also to Russians. 
because we are aware that uh, information about the Ukraine, information about the world come to Russia in their own light because of the propaganda, uh, which is uh, uh, pro huge propaganda, which is like operational in, 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 in Russia for decades. Uh, to tell them the truth and uh, to tell this powerful message. So uh, it's really um, uh, it's really important for our presidents to have um, uh, those speeches before the different governments before the and it's important also for us to deliver the message to the global to to the public opinion of the of the world. Um, so this is. Um, shortly briefly about about our situation um would like to maybe maybe, add maybe I'll, i will add just some points uh, the first point is about our ukrainian refugees uh, it's important to note that only women and kids are allowed to leave the country uh, all the men of the working age uh, from 18 uh, and uh, from 18 till 60 are obliged to stay here in Ukraine to defend uh, the country. And uh, actually, we are very thankful to the neighboring nations and um, to the, the whole world for this support that uh, it demonstrate, demonstrates to Ukrainian people. Uh, you can imagine that about 3 million people, 3 million uh, kids and women now are hosted in, uh, in the neighboring countries. Um, uh, several hours ago, I uh, talked to my father. Actually, every day uh, we start our every day from calls to Kiev to our relatives. And uh, several hours ago, I uh, talked to my father. He is now shifting rubbles um, of um, of some destroyed uh, residential buildings in our district. Actually, our ambulance um, uh, where our doctors uh, um, uh, the ma ma medical medical med office close to us is, yes medical it, it office was destroyed, of, our, yeah. of our doctors was destroyed and there was also a school nearby uh, all the windows uh, um, broken and uh, um, rubbles are every, everywhere so my father went there and helped uh, uh, our um, services, our state services, to uh, shift all this uh, all these ru uh, rubbles. Um, such uh, situations with uh, missiles, uh, which uh, are fell, uh, which are falling uh, uh, on the residential buildings and schools, are very common to Kyiv and to other Ukrainian cities. For example, this night, the whole country, the whole Ukraine was praying about Mariupol. Mariupol uh, is a city uh, close to the Russian border in the south, uh, in the southern Ukraine. And uh, actually, uh, there, are, there is a humanitarian catastrophe in Mariupol because it is, uh, it has been surrounded by Russian troops for three or four weeks. And uh, Russian troops, uh, don't allow to uh, provide uh, the inhabitants with food, water, and, and med uh, medicines. And um, there is no water, no electricity, and no heating uh, in the city. Just one hospital is working, and uh, the doctors uh, are saying that they have nothing, uh, uh, they, they can't do nothing with the injured people because they have no uh, medicines. And uh, the situation is very bad. Uh, the green corridors are not working because um, even if they are um, green corridors, I mean to evacuate people, they are not working uh, even if they are discussed between three parties, Ukrainian, Russian, and the Red Cross. Uh, although they are appointed at some time, Russian troops go on shooting and they don't allow uh, people to evacuate and don't invite, uh, don't allow uh, humanitarian organizations uh, uh, to deliver food and um, drugs to the to the city and what happened yesterday uh, uh, since residential buildings are very heavily bombed many people uh, left their uh, houses and uh, went to the bomb shelters and among those bomb shelters, there, there were a swimming pool, uh, the city swimming pool, and uh, also the drama theater. Uh, those buildings were uh, bomb shelters for many days, and uh, everyone knows that uh, there were many children and many 
uh, women and also other civilians. And uh, they were bombed yesterday. And uh, the whole Ukraine was praying uh, and uh, we actually, uh, at the moment, we don't know how many people are saved, how many are dead and how many are injured. But we know that uh, thanks to God, mm, the theater, uh, the theater basement uh, was very strong and uh, it uh, actually it uh, saved se several uh, hundreds lives because in the drama theater there was a big bomb shelter and uh, several hundred people were uh, living there for for many days um and if <clears throat> i'm sorry and uh, we don't want to um, uh, to interrupt our uh, conversation with different videos, you can Google it by yourself and uh, uh, look uh, that uh, and, and, and prove to yourself that um, there were um, civilians in Mariupol in, in those bomb shelters. And actually, uh, you can see BBC's photos. Um, they show um, they show us uh, the squares uh, before and behind the theater, and uh, there were two words written uh, on the squares in huge, huge letters, uh, and the and the, those words were in Russian, and those words were children. So just to to uh, let anybody know that there there are no military objects; there are just children inside or civilians inside. So actually, these are very, this, the situation is very bad and um, we can see these atrocities in different cities of Ukraine. We can observe uh, the same situation as in Mariupol, actually in the small uh, towns near Kyiv, um, to the north and uh, to the west uh, from Kyiv. Um, actually, those towns are between the Chernobyl nuclear power station, as my husband has mentioned, and uh, Kyiv. And they were bombed heavily and uh, they were destroyed. Um, some of them are destroyed to the end. And uh, there was also uh, a humanitarian disaster there, but uh, uh, after several attempts, uh, some people were evacuated, uh, but uh, actually th there we can observe uh, such pictures like people, not people, bodies laying in their yards, uh, in the streets. Uh, some are buried in their yards, uh, some are buried in the common graves, and it's very, it's horrible actually. So yeah, um... Uh, how how the government uh, how they you know explain that that actually Kremlin Putin wants uh, the um, sort of blitzkrieg as they call it like a very quick war like within two or three days they plan to capture the the Ukraine but actually uh, because this miscalculation because they actually the armed forces of Ukraine and the people uh, uh, hold on and uh, resist uh, fiercely they uh, this this kind of plan uh was destroyed and actually uh they don't have any other choice how to but to bomb the civilians bomb the the shelters bomb the uh, this basement where the civilian hide and actually when we say shelters you know we don't have like special shel shelters for 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 for, uh, for for this kind of things you know is is mostly um, the basement of the of the apartment buildings or some basement of the kindergartens basement of the theaters again uh, or some parking lots on the ground uh, so of course there there is some there are some shelters built like uh, in 50s and 60s who can you know um, uh, with, withstand some uh, some nuclear even attack. However, mostly you know in recent days not not such uh, such structures have been built. So that's why people try to hide whenever they they can more or less find uh, appropriate to hide according to their uh, kind of n n knowledge. And uh, yeah, but on the east, uh, this bom civilian uh, bombings, uh, bombings of civilian continues, and uh, actually some of the cities, uh, small cities, have been actually wiped out. You know, from the surface already, like the city of Volnovakha, it actually doesn't exist anymore, uh, or the city of um, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Irpin, Bucha, close to Kiev, they again they doesn't exist because it's just. Uh, 
clean you know Stop. deleted from from the from the surface uh, uh so it's very horrible because it's uh you know we've seen that before in the on tv but now it's happening before our eyes and it's uh, it's um, uh, really uh, it seems that uh, he wants to just um, uh, uh, to um, to kill the nation you know because there is no no other excuse but just he wants to uh, to that so um you know, uh, each war is a disaster, each war. But actually, the 20th century, uh, with its uh, two world wars, with local wars and crisis, crises, and with uh, um, famines and so on, it showed us that the, the most valuable things are uh, human and human life and uh, human humans' freedoms. And... Uh, Many organizations, international organizations, were founded to ensure peace, and many laws were written to ensure peace. But actually, we can see that they don't work when somebody wants to break them. And what is going on in Ukraine? It's a, it's unbelievable violation of uh, human rights, of uh, um, international laws, of military laws, and of humanitarian aid aid rules. Um, I don't want to uh, quote Putin, actually, but I had to, because, because uh, a person who is killing children and uh, women and other civilians who is lying to the world and to its own people is not a politician, but actually I had to, I have to refer to his words. He said he went to Ukraine to make demilitarization and denazification. So where he is looking for the Nazis, for the Ukrainian Nazis, in the maternity hospitals, in schools, in orphan schools, in the residential buildings, what, what should it be inside, in the head and in the heart of the, of the Russian soldier that he is shooting with the gun? He's shooting a Ukrainian uh, family with three children in a car in the capital of Ukraine in the 21st century, in the, in the middle of, of the capital of, the, uh, another, of another state. So um, we uh, actually, um, my husband has mentioned that Ukraine wasn't ready with uh, bomb shelters. It wasn't ready uh, that a neighboring country, a uh, Slavic country, uh, would come to us and uh, make such uh, cruel things, such atrocities. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, sorry for our to emotions, us. Uh, yes. Maybe yeah, maybe it's too emotional, but you can. Um, uh, maybe you have your insights or your questions. Maybe we can continue with uh, you know uh, uh, already started from your questions. Ras, thank you. Thank you to you. This is, we're so grateful for your time, for you being here and giving us the kind of insight who no one, no one else can give, but those who are in the midst of this war in the, in the city. Uh, why don't we collect some questions? Um, any questions for our speakers here? Yes, John has a question. Uh, you mentioned earlier the um, night patrols. Uh, what exactly is, is that about what are you uh, watching out for? But was okay. that question clear about night patrols? Would uh, yeah, each uh, is actually uh, you know um, each district or each uh, each house. We have apartment houses, you know, the house which is like uh, in Kiev, like two hundred uh, apartments, like like condo, yeah, it's like something like apartment so houses. apartments in the apartment building and uh, in Lviv also we have like not so many but maybe um, 70 70 flats or apartments in the building and of course people are kind of have uh, some sort of the society within the building and they can care about what's going on what kind of the security we have around the building because you know everybody can enter or exit the building or everybody you know there's some <clears throat> what's going on around the building and in the in our neighborhood so um basically uh and each war started as as we as we know not only by by the troops entering the country crossing the the border but also there was a huge 
uh, preparation stage of the uh, internal kind of how they call sabotage or diversion groups within Ukraine that like you know some prepared storage of weapons and storage of different kind of uh, uh, bombs that uh, can make uh, kind uh, some attacks internally. Uh, that's why uh, the government and the people started to care about this and to, to concern about this. And they started to kind of patrol each uh, vicinity for this kind of any, 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 any suspicious activity that's going on within that. And of course, uh, by TV, on TV, there is some, uh, you know, instructions, what you have paid attention to specifically. And actually, there was a uh, there was a, at the beginning, there was a, a lot of instructions that when you see some paintings with some symbols with the with this um, uh, with, with the paint that uh, how it's called that uh, you can see at night, you know, uh, floor, floristic. Yeah. Uh, so you have to uh, to delete it and not only to paint uh, over it because it will not work because it's actually a trans trans uh, trans uh, uh, you you can see from uh, through that you have to uh, put soil on it uh, the, or, or actually you have to put some sand on it uh, to uh, block it from the uh, from block it to be visible from uh, from distance or from the sky actually so I don't what, we don't know exactly the reason of that but there is some some things that we have uh, been um, uh, told and uh, people are starting to you know to uh, make some vigils especially at night uh, and um, uh, to just to increase the safety uh, safety uh, in in their neighborhoods like that so we um, we have the couple of us like me and another guy you know we have this vigil hours like we just uh, uh, shifts we have kind of shifts and uh, we we did that and um, yeah so it's a simple thing, but it was uh, helps to first of all to increase the security uh, safety, but increase the feeling of safety. If if so, it so they, this shortly, uh, yeah, briefly what we what thank we did. you, Taras. That was really um, helpful. Uh, those on Zoom, you can also ask questions. Just raise your hand, and I'll actually be able to attend to you. Uh, any other questions for that? Yesterday, Taras, when we talked, I thought you had really interesting uh, insights on the broader implications of this war. Why should our students pay attention to what's happening? How do you think this is going to shift um, the world politics? Uh, so, uh, yeah, of course, this uh, war have uh, has implications globally and uh, global impact of this war. Uh, so, I, I don't know the background of the of the of the audience now, but if you if you have hist historic background, you can also assess like what kind of implications it may have, or if you have any other background. But for for instance, you know, from our point of view, uh, it's um, I think um, you know this war is not is not far away from uh, even from you because it will have implications if putin will uh you know uh, it, it he will not but just assume he if he has if if he will have an upper hand and if he succeed in kind of his uh, uh, wish uh what does it mean for the world it means that the autocracies the yeah autocracies uh, they will um they will feel more you know they will feel more uh, freely to do what they want to do and the western democracies uh will be frightened by by nuclear weapon and because what putin is doing now you know i putin is doing whatever he wants and uh, when the western democracies ask him uh, not to do that he said okay i will push the button and the western democracies are frightened by that and they stop doing uh, and just uh, watching what he's doing. Okay, just it's just simplistic, you know. But uh, but uh, the 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 democracy, a democracy should be also strong in any kind of um, uh, in any kind of uh, meaning. It has it has capacity to protect itself. That's why we're very thankful to U.S. to President Biden to all the congressmen to provide us with uh, those capacities and tools that we can continue resistance uh, and also helpful to the UK and to Mr. Johnson, of course, and to other allies, but specifically those two countries, UK and US, 
provided help to us from the very beginning. They just understood what we deal with. And that's why um, it's, it's very important because uh, you can imagine if Ukraine will, uh, will, 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 will kind of win and restore the peace, then the democracies will feel uh, strong and the global structure of security will be more kind of uh, optimistic, I would say. But if, if we fail, uh, then, uh, then, you know, other autocracies will, uh, will kind of, will, will be more feeling freely. I mean, I don't want to call some, uh, you know, countries, but, but you know what I mean, you know, this will be a different situation. And uh, even now, some uh, analysts say that uh, you know, uh, this uh, security, global security structure that used to be uh, is already over. There is something new is coming up and we have to dis negotiate and to discuss another structure. There is no, uh, there will be no business as usual after, after this war and even now. So uh, in, if somebody from the, you know, there are some, some maybe people think that, okay, this is something local something local local conflict and something like that it will finish and it will be okay it's not gonna be okay it's uh, it's uh, the business is usually is gone thank you for that taras i could not agree with you more um any questions for the rest again those who are attending via zoom you can just raise your hand and i should be able to see you. yes val you have a question you can unmute yourself first uh, uh taras and, and your family thank you so much for for appearing um uh, it's uh, one thing to read the news, and it's it's uh, something entirely different to be able to speak with real people. Um, how is the is the banking situation affecting you now? Or, that is um, one of the worries that we have in contri in contributing money to various causes is can people in Ukraine actually use the money? Um, uh, is uh, is it better to contribute goods? Do, do credit cards work? Do does are the banks open? And that and that that question, as far as you know, I, I know in in Lvov the situation is better. Um, in, in, do you know what what the answer is for other cities like like Ki like Kiev or Odessa? Maybe I will start with yeah, the sure. banking situation. Uh, yes, economy is on so far. Uh, banking system is on so far. Uh, actually, we we have uh, we, we had the democracy in Ukraine, so I can uh, just tell you that we didn't vote for uh, our president, our current president. But actually, now we uh, we feel some respect uh, for him because uh, he is managing to keep our state working. Uh, for example, my parents are uh, both. Uh, uh, retired and they uh, now they have received their retirement pa uh, retirement payments uh, now in March I mean ev even in the state of war um, um, uh, our credit cards are working uh, and um, it was a bit uh, a problem with uh, food with some uh, kinds of food long long standing uh, food long standing products. Uh, and uh, with some medicine, because people uh, just uh, uh, went to the shops and to supermarkets and were trying to buy uh, all of this stuff uh, and uh, keep it on, uh, keep it at home for their families, and also they um, um, bring. Uh, medicines and food uh, in huge quantities uh, to our uh, humanitarian aid centers uh, to provide uh, refugees and to provide our our Ukrainian army, right? And uh, uh, there were uh, empty shelves uh, on the uh, in the supermarkets. And when we came from Kyiv, uh, we just had a place where to live. Uh, this is the place of our relatives, but we uh, didn't have uh, uh, products and we came to the supermarket and we couldn't buy uh, many things because it, they were out. But now uh, the situation is under control and um, 
uh, many businesses are uh, back to uh, work and they uh, are trying to supply uh, all the necessary uh, products uh, uh, and uh, all the necessary drugs into pharmacies and shops. So I, I think that uh, so far Ukrainian economy is doing well. Uh, actually, the prices uh, uh, are growing up, uh, but uh, but we we hope for for the better, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can add that uh, Ukraine was and is is a is a democratic country with uh, you know a peaceful country with uh, ex ex aspirations joining EU and we developed that way. So it means that uh, we have quite well developed and uh, diversified banking system. It, it uh, works well. Many many things uh, have been uh, online and is still working. I mean, it's uh, we digitalized uh, quite well. So um, it's it, it's it's working. Uh, so maybe this is the risk of the again auth auth autocracies. You know, they are very centralized and one bank collapse everything collapsed but we're quite well doing well in terms of the banking system and uh, and the national bank actually open accounts for supporting armed forces humanitarian aid uh, refugees uh, so it gives uh, these possibilities to uh, every, to all supporters that can help ukraine and um, so far is okay yeah maybe some shelves empty with some products because you know uh, but again i think we will uh, uh, the economy is starting to be more like the wartime economy and uh, it's understandable when you shift that maybe some products will disappear but gradually it's coming up i i, I remember two a week ago there was no gas on the stations only the most most exp, exp, expensive one but now gradually no uh they uh they again appeared on the stations i don't know from where maybe from uh from other sources you know maybe uh, there was some eastern uh, uh refinery closed but again it was shifted to the central refinery on the, on the west or maybe even from poland so more or less is uh is uh, is is working so again this is there is a i would say this is the one of the uh, symbols of um resilience uh, of uh, ukrainian uh, country of ukrainian people and uh, i think uh, in, in even in believing in that we will overcome so and if i if i may ask uh, one a totally uh, separate uh, question uh, okay. ukraine uh, uh, on my visits has 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 always seem, seemed to be to be a pretty cohesive country that that has two languages that are uh, spoken uh, spoken on the streets and in shops and and, and everywhere the uh, i know that there is that in the west uh, more people are uh, more people favor ukrainian in the east more more people favor russian do you see a a, a divide among people in ukraine now uh, based on their favored language that is are uh, are people uh, the the um, is there, for example, uh, discrimination against native Russian speakers who don't speak Ukrainian that well? Uh, there was there was never discrimination. I mean, there's some uh, uh, actually now, um, you know, it's even difficult to, to start with something here because as of today, as of today, uh, I would say uh, that um, when you when you go to the front line, I'm sure most likely you will hear russian <laughs> because this is the uh, now the battlefield is on the east of uh, of ukraine and those soldiers there like uh, uh, now in the in the in the fight they most likely you will hear russian you know so what, what i mean i mean uh, it, it's it's not the it's not the issue at all now in ukraine i mean it's uh, just just people speaking both both languages and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe you I, can add some. Uh... I add, yes, actually, it was uh, it was Ukrainian Russian information war that Ukraine has failed, because actually Russian people, uh, Russian language, didn't need defense ever, uh, because. Uh, Russian people, Russian speaking people, uh, yes, you, you, you are right. They uh, mostly inhabit uh, southern and eastern parts of Ukraine, and they were they uh, have they they were feeling 
perfectly with uh, their Russian language uh, at home, in schools, in supermarkets, in governmental bodies. Uh, there were Russian channels, um, Russian artists and Russian songs. And you don't believe, but it was Ukrainian language which was protected by the special law in 2019. Because if you, uh, if you look at the statistics, you will see that in 2013, for example, in, on Ukrainian TV, there were just 16% of Ukrainian language. Uh, and 16%, uh, uh, so 84% was uh, Russian language. And I, I have been, I was born in Lviv. It is in Western part of Ukraine. But for 16 years, I have, I have been living in Kyiv and right in some situations, I found myself in a minority which uh, spoke Ukrainian. And my children now uh, in uh, there are five uh, in their fifth and in their uh, in uh, his fifth and, and in her second uh, year of school, and uh, their classmates mostly speak Russian, but those Russians don't have anything in common with Russia. They are Ukrainians. If you look at any website of the, of any Kyiv school or other school in Ukraine, you will show that those children are learning Ukrainian. They are learning Ukrainian writers and poets. They uh, they put uh, our national Ukrainian embroidered shirts uh, on every holiday, and it's not compulsory. Nobody uh, make them do that. And uh, uh, children play all together. And there are parents, um, for example, uh, our classmates' parents know that we are from Lviv, so they uh, talk to us and they often say, say that, um, well, we would like to, uh, um, we would like to speak uh, Ukrainian as you, but we can't because we have been uh, growing in uh, uh, Russian speaking families because our parents uh, speak, uh, uh, spoke Russian and it was very fashionable in the Soviet times to speak Russian, but if you ask them about their grandparents, you will find that their grandparents, uh, mostly in the villages, in small, city, small cities, they, uh, they spoke Ukrainian at their times. So actually, I think that this problem was just uh, um, heated it? and uh, 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 heated by the by some politicians who wanted uh, to um, turn Ukraine from the European values into uh, Russian to the Russian uh, side uh, and actually Ukraine uh, you can you can also uh, see that uh, Ukraine um, was common in its uh, um, uh, in its values uh, we have uh, this first peaceful revolution in 2004 and then again peaceful revolution in 2013 when when the whole ukraine or actually the biggest part of ukraine was um uh was trying to was expressing their uh, their willingness to join European values and was uh, uh, united without any difference to uh, Russian or Ukrainian languages. Those people who speak Russian, they are also Ukrainian, and you know now refugees from those parts of Ukraine that were uh, that that used to speak Russian. They move not to Russia, they moved to the West. Almost 3 million people, almost 3 million uh, kids and women now are in Europe. And those people are from Kharkiv, which is Russian speaking, from Mariupol, from, uh, I don't know, Luhansk, Donetsk. We have refugees in both of our classes at school from Crimea and from Donbass region. So, Thank you so much for that answer. That's uh, quite enlightening and helpful for our students and other community members. Other questions? Again, they said, yes, yes, Emily has a question. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been truly just really wonderful to hear you. Um, 
I was wondering how you are doing as parents and how your children are doing and how um, you know the community is helping children cope during this difficult time. Uh, yeah, thank you for for question. Is actually yes, as I said. Um, my kids uh, went to school in Kiev and uh, now they moved and uh, actually uh, now uh, uh, teachers try to organize the remote uh, learning. So we are, we are well accepted here in, uh, in Lviv and actually Lviv uh, authorities uh, allow uh, kids to go to local school physically but again this uh, it's uh, the, the school and are closed like physically it's only remote uh, remote so they can switch the class if they want but actually remotely it doesn't matter if you go to the local one or to the to the distant one so uh, so they they now in the process of organizing how they're going to proceed with this with this remote uh, remote uh, so it's now it's yeah it's this uh, system now the ruin we have we have remote classes during the covid um, uh, pandemic, but um, now, uh, so they, they try to continue that. Uh, but of course, for kids, it's quite difficult because they want to, they want this, you know, class community, they want to communicate, they just many, many kids, uh, you know, go, um, went abroad to, to Poland, to, to other countries, many, many kids uh, left Kiev, uh, actually, most maybe one or two only on the uh, remaining in Kiev. Uh, so, um, of course, it's difficult for kids to be, maybe maybe it's, it's still short time for them to have some time to adapt to do that, but it will come and they will miss classes, they will miss uh, friends, they will miss the, this kind of uh, system, especially now kids are very fond of school and like, like you know, um, uh, this um, um, uh, studying and um, uh, yeah, maybe you can add. Uh, I have to point that uh, uh, the vacation, two week vacations were announced by the Ministry of Education when the war uh, started. So uh, two weeks, uh, we, uh, all the schools were silent in Ukraine. And, and now uh, it, it is uh, like our teachers uh, uh, communicate uh, with uh, parents and ask about their possibilities to provide uh, internet uh, to organize these remote uh, lessons for children. And uh, so we think that uh, from, from the next Monday, we will have some option, we will have some option to, for children to study. Uh, so far, the, the, as my husband has mentioned, uh, uh, this remote uh, possibilities uh, of studying uh, are discussed and probably they will, uh, they will use, it, uh, use the same uh, system as we have during the COVID uh, quarantines. And uh, what about our children? I have to say that they tried to be strong. Uh, our daughter cried, but cried before the war. Uh, actually, we, with Taras, uh, speak English a little bit, so we could read uh, this um, uh, foreign uh, articles about uh, preparations to war, because our government, to be honest, uh, wasn't very, uh, like, um, uh, it was it was uh, uh, providing us with some information, but it was it was trying to calm down the population, and uh, it didn't uh, um, tell us that the war is yeah. is going is is about you know. So um, actually, we uh, uh, tried to be ready because we uh, read uh, some foreign media, and I started to pack our. Uh, bags and uh, our daughter was asking all the time 10 10 11 times a day oh how how would it how it would be when Putin came should I speak Russian uh, should the, the, should the school stop and so on but uh, now uh, she feels this uh, uh, unity in Ukrainian society this patriotic songs this um uh, words of our singers and uh, famous uh, famous people, and uh, she is quite well. But uh, in front of her, our son, he is uh, he will be twelve, and um, he was uh, calm and he was uh, um, strong. But several days ago, he uh, saw this video video facts 
with uh, children with killed and injured ki children and he cried so he was horrified and he cried yeah for kids it's uh, difficult yeah. because uh, among the refugees half of them like one million is kids and one one my nephew is now in poland in krakow another uh friends of uh, danilo is in berlin and uh, another relatives with the four-year uh, girl um, just a couple of days ago came to Viv and uh, so, so if the they are younger they maybe don't understand it but when they grow, when they more yeah older they start asking questions and sometimes you have to uh, ask to um, uh, yeah to find uh, correct answers to to the to those questions and what about retired people um for example, for uh, our uh, relatives, uh, my father and three elder relatives stayed in Kyiv because they didn't want to leave their uh, houses where they have been living for all their lives. It was very difficult for them and it wasn't acceptable for them. And um, I have to say that we are ready to go there and to, ev to try to go there and to evacuate them, but they didn't want, they don't, they don't want. And um, actually, I have to say that our uh, state services uh, are doing well so far. For example, uh, one of our relatives receives uh, social care. So this uh, uh, social service uh, comes uh, uh, to her apartment uh, once uh, in two days and uh, brings uh, some food for her and uh, the last uh, package of food uh, she said that it was uh, uh, composed of different polish uh, products polish food so we are very thankful to our neighboring countries for any types of uh, support from refugees to such support as food to our uh, to our elderly people and just one small remark, uh, maybe following the well questions about the banking system, of course, uh, besides banks, all the utilities are working, uh, trying to work uh, to perform. And uh, thanks, of course, to the, to the army and thanks also to the municipal and the, how we call them communal services, the waste. So the water, hot water, uh, the, um, the kind of all kind of the utilities, the heating, because we now in Ukraine there is we have uh, minus uh, uh, Celsius, so which which is cold. The the the, uh, the water is freezed, and uh, so it's all important. So this is another front, another people who are heroes, and we appreciate that uh, that they are really heroes to provide the services during wartime. Was very helpful. Thank you, Taras. Uh, if any, if you have any questions, please either use the chat room or raise your hand, and I'll attend to you. I'm really curious uh, to hear what you both make, but you know, hopefully, if, when this war ends, about the reconciliation process. What do you think it will take for these two nations to come back together? We know now know that Russians are more immersed in propaganda and it's been quite effective in that country. What, what do you anticipate will happen uh, post-conflict? Uh, maybe I would say that, of course, every war uh, ends um, with some uh, kind of the um, a treaty I, I I would even not call it agreement because agreement means that you have to agree on something. So um, I think that is here is important uh, for us as a, as a Ukrainians that all these efforts, all these sacrifices, and all these victims, and uh, that uh, Ukrainian people suffer suffered. Um, it's important that uh, not to kind of devalue or to level. Uh, this suffering of Ukrainian people, because there is uh, there's a lot there's a lot of bad things already done, and um, on the one hand, and uh, it's one reason. Another reason is that uh, you know um, you cannot trust in those agreements. So it means that um, uh, it means that actually um, you know if we agree on something and uh, we're not sure if it's not just delay or postponed the, the 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 atrocities you know in a few years you know because um yeah because if you if you look at the history of this region of this of this kind of relations you will uh, you will see that the russia always threatened ukraine 
Um, it always threatened, and that's because um, for man, I don't know, for many reasons, but uh, it doesn't mean that Ukraine owns something to Russia. It just, um, uh, it's uh, for many, many centuries. And uh, uh, that's why all these things are also very distorted by propaganda. Propaganda is like huge issue, like everything, everything, even like any, any kind of issue you can touch, like language issue, it's all propaganda as it works for, for for already for decades and it's important that you know you have a you have a really true look on this so uh what i mean uh, i mean that um i'm afraid uh, that uh, this agreement will only delay uh, and postpone the war for a few years so of course uh, this is a good moment that uh, you know you can um, kind of i would say transform russia to some words, because uh, um, uh, more sanctions, more help from the from the Western democracies to Ukraine, and uh, uh, because um, we need this kind of treaty on our terms, on the terms of the Western democracies, because we don't believe personally that you know there is some uh, talks about okay, what about the civil society in Russia? I don't believe they exist there. You know, like even before the war, seventy more than seventy percent of Russians supported Putin. So it's not only Putin. It's not about Kremlin. It's not Putin. It's about Russians inherently about themselves. They support him. So it means that this is very maybe maybe I'm saying the words maybe you know this is very strict words, but this situation is very. Very reminds me of the situation before before World War II, you know that uh, propaganda and uh, brainwashed and this kind of the huge support. Uh, we know how it's ended up, so it I would say it shouldn't be ended up in a way like this here. It is the and then uh, the new security structure of the global global security structure can be then set up then everybody could be trust in this kind of structure. Um, yeah, maybe you- Thank you, you want, Yeah. That was very, that was quite helpful. Thank you for those insights. I see that Daria has questions. Oh, when, uh, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm to start my video. Um, may I please say a few words in Russian to you? Uh, so, дорогие вам спасибо огромное. Мы просто переживаем ужасно за вас. Мы не спим вообще по ночам, читаем новости. Просто это потрясло то есть всех, всех русских, которые против войны. Uh, это настолько потрясло. We cannot... Um, uh, so this is just um, shattering for us. Is, um, the world just, you know, it's smashed down on... Uh, on um, uh, February the 24th, uh, because uh, so especially um, those uh, friends of mine who live in Russia and who are, who are trying to to get on streets and uh, get detained all the time. Um, so for them, it's uh, especially difficult because it's their taxpayers money used uh, for this um, horrific barbarian war. And uh, they don't know what to do about this. And um, um, yeah, it's uh, um, okay. So um, um, my question. I actually was in uh, Ukraine in 2004 during the Orange Revolution. I was uh, making a documentary about um, 2004 Orange Revolution, and I particularly um, so uh, spent a lot of time in Lviv. Uh, and um, I guess it it was uh, so. It's it's fair to assess that in um, around 2004, before 2010, maybe there were an equal amount of um, pro 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 western and pro russian voters in uh, pro russian voters in southern parts of ukraine and in uh, in eastern parts of ukraine that started to change in uh, in um, around 2012 and then of course uh, a crucial point a crucial turning point was uh, 2014 uh, with the annexation of crimea and uh, starting the war in donbas 
Um, nevertheless, still there were some uh, pro-Russian political parties, very, very minor, but they existed. Um, and uh, so Russian propaganda, what they do right now, so they, they show people allegedly from uh, Donbass regions, yeah, from the Eastern Ukraine, they show them and they say that they're so happy that they got liberated. So they, they, they show them crying from happiness, you know, from being uh, liberated from the alleged Nazis. Uh, so my question to you, so in reality, uh, do such people even exist? After 2014, uh, are there people in Ukrainians who, uh, uh, among Ukrainians, among conservative Ukrainians who used to be pro-Russian, kind of who wanted at least to be friends with Russian? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, if you could please comment on that. Спасибо, Дарья, за вопрос. Thank you for for the question and спасибо за поддержку. And thank you, thank you for support. Um, um, no, such people does, don't exist. I mean, if you know, the Russians actually, um, uh, the Kremlin said, like, <laughs> as my wife said, denazification, so it means like, but if the if 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 uh, if Kremlin doesn't uh, like somebody, they call it they call it Nazi, you know, like, I, I just don't like you, you're Nazi. You don't speak Russian, you're Nazi. But I speak German. Okay, I'm German. Oh, sorry. I think you're not. You know, it's um, it's uh, it's very it's very uh, distorted by propaganda. I mean, propaganda is the key word that like distorted everything. Like you, you've been to Lviv. You've been hopefully maybe you've been to other cities. We during Orange Revolution we've been to Kiev. We saw this kind of solidarity of people from uh, different uh, different uh, kind of regions, and. Um, even even though if uh, there maybe there were some conservatives, I mean, what what we mean conservatives, you know, like those who express so not not of course like pro Putin or like uh, who who want to to be part of Russia. No, I'm not talking yeah, about yeah. Russia, but at least those who who I don't know cherished uh, the common memories of World War II uh, again among among seniors. Yeah, that was an especially uh, popular uh, uh, sentiment. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah. Conservatives who who like you know cherish they kind of. Uh, uh, young, young years, you know, mm -hmm. during uh, during some um, co 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 communist maybe, but uh, but you know, it's already past thirty years from independence. Thirty years, so uh, the whole generation have been uh, raised, and um, they are uh, they are kind of uh, support for the for the kind of uh, the more for the EU. You know, uh, membership is like huge. For Na NATO, is huge, and like it's. Um, it's like the direction of Ukraine that have been chosen for for majority of people. Like majority, I mean, like more than eighty percent. So it means that, and and the twenty percent just maybe you know they lost uh, because they don't know what what is that. And, After twenty fourteen, uh, you mean right? Or because into uh, there was someone who voted for Yanukovych, right? So um... uh, yeah, I no, I mean now uh, during forty uh, forty was. Uh, uh, yeah, situation, uh, what was in 2014? No, I, uh, Daria is asking about uh, the situation before uh, 2014 when Russian troops uh, occupied uh, Donbass and Crimea. And uh, because she remembered this, uh, these elections of uh, um, president, right? Uh, and uh, equal, uh, almost equal uh, votes for Yanukovych and Yushin right mm -hmm. so, um, I, I would say that uh, you know uh, I didn't actually believe at that time and I don't believe in this uh, in, and I don't believe now that um, Russian influencers uh, uh, didn't uh, take part in uh, in the statistics uh, that's my uh, personal uh, vision but still uh, the second point is that, um, you know, of course, there are some people uh, on the east and uh, on the uh, in the east and in the south of Ukraine uh, who uh, think that Putin is not um, so bad as we uh, talk, as we say, because they also uh, had Russian channels and uh, Russian uh, showed, uh, not showed, uh, watched the Russian TV shows and uh, read Russian newspapers. But uh, such people are not um, 
there are no big quantities of those people and uh, uh, we feel we know that uh, the problem is um, like uh, heating by the propaganda and those Russian parties which are in minority and which are not respectful, and uh, especially by younger generations. And uh, uh, so it, it's like uh, artificially uh, made problem. What about our uh, last, last quick question? What about Crimea? Are there more uh, such people in Crimea? If you could give a brief answer to that, we probably will need to wrap mm -hmm. up. Uh, 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 we, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people in Crimea who, who, who actually uh, who are for Ukraine because, you know, briefly speaking, if uh, Russia uh, fixed uh, or tried to fix elections in US, you can ju just only imagine what they can do to the elections to the next country. And in this situation, we still manage to vote for the Western for, for the Western uh, kind of presidents, for the Western oriented presidents. It means that the majority of voters was so huge, so even this fraud couldn't uh, trump them. And in Crimea, the same. We, we don't know, like, it's, it was never like, you know, uh, uh, free elections there or free kind of the, the polls there but if we ask freely i'm sure the crimea is completely for that but um, i mean it's um, yeah please join me everyone to thank taras um and his wife. this was so helpful thank you very thank you. much it was uh, very pleasant for us to participate and i uh, we wish that uh, the war will be uh, uh, will be over, so we really hope for that. Uh, and uh, thank you for your support. We hope so too. We'll be praying for you. Thank you so much for being here. And Taras did provide links to those who want um, to find a ways to contribute meaningfully. He very that, much encouraged yeah. to contribute to the army directly. And I can share if you're interested. I can share those links. For now, thank you so much. Please take thank care you. of yourselves, and we will be in touch. Hopefully, we can connect uh, in the future again. Thank you. Have a great thank rest you. of your thank evening. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Спасибо огромное. Спасибо. Пока, Тарас. Спасибо огромное еще раз. Спасибо. Thank you. Bye.